All right, so I have been hardcore in the rod building for about a week now. So this video right here, I already made an intro for it once. This is the second take at the intro because the first one didn't turn out too well. But anyways, gonna show you how I build a rod, kind of my preferences on a few things and what the rods that I build actually weigh. Not gonna compare them to other brands because I'm not going to try to bash any other brands, but just gonna show you what my rods weigh and kind of the tips and tricks that I do and how I kind of like to, you know, mess with the rods and get them right for what I'm gonna use them for. So. Let's show you how to build a rod. All right, so I'm gonna show you today how I build a rod. I built a couple now, so I know about how I like to do it. Right here, I've got a seven foot three, medium heavy, extra fast, point blank, blank. And I've got some cork. I'm gonna show you how I get the cork on there. This is the first thing that I do. Okay, so I've got this blank marked right here. That's where I want my grip to be. So I'm gonna ream this out. A buddy of mine built me these reamers. I'm gonna ream this out by hand until the cork slides down onto the blank. Got a bigger reamer, so when it gets to where I can fit this one in there, I slide this one in there. Slide the cork on the blank. Should be That's it. In between my yellow lines. Then we gotta do the butt cap. I actually do it with a drill. Okay, so all these cork pieces come with a like a quarter inch hole in it, maybe even smaller than that, but because this butt cap has rubberized cork here and rubberized cork here, you can actually drill into it and it's not gonna crumble like the grip would. So I'll take this half ounce drill bit. The real seat assembly that I use comes with like these barrels and then this arbor that goes on the inside of it. So you slide this in and then you glue it in with rod building paste. So I'm just showing you that I've already got some in my pocket that I have ours like a cooking show. We're making one I'll just pull one out of the oven. So we uh, already got this glued in. So I'm gonna show you how I ream this out. I mean it's the same exact way. You just start with a reamer. You always want to put the skinny side towards the tip of the blank, how it's gonna go on there. And then because the reamers taper to a bigger size, then you just ream it out. Get the hole big enough for it to slide down on the rod. This is kind of my workstation. It is a disaster right now. If I take this, this is the Rod Builders Epoxy Glue. A lot of people like to use the paste, but I just ordered this because I can get it here very quickly. And it's just kind of a little easier to manage for me than scooping out of a jar. I've seen people use both, but this has worked well so far. We'll see how it goes. I know a lot of people told me not to use this. Some people told me to use this, but just kind of, I've already got the part A on here and this is the hardener so you just kind of squirt out an even two even size things on a magazine or whatever you want to put it on and one of them is usually more dense than the other one so you kind of got to let it settle so I just mix up on a magazine because it just kind of holds it there I throw it away right afterwards put a little bit more of this on there everything I've got reamed out I've got the cork on here and everything so first thing I do is you got to mix it up I just use a popsicle stick go to some hobby lobby or something they got some fancier names for it can charge a little more but it's just a popsicle stick epoxy applying device i'll take a little bit and put it down in the butt cap get it in there good never had a butt cap move in my entire life so not really too worried about it put some on the rod blank Just twist it up on up there. You can see how whenever I move it up, it's gonna push it all the way up the blank in front of this butt cap, so. And that epoxy right there will turn hard as a rock. To finish an epoxy, you have to be very, very precise with the amounts. This right here is not as important. All right, putting the real seat on now. I've got my two marks marked where I want to my real seat to be sitting. You can see the red and yellow marks right there. Same thing, bring it down here and twist it on. I try to hold it back over my pile because a lot of the epoxy is going to drip off for this. If you use the paste, it's not as bad, but this really does seem to drip. So what do you do with all the excess on the right there? 
I let, I let it harden for about 25, 30 minutes. Then I wipe it off with alcohol. And it'll take it right off. Not a big deal at all. And I have enough glue down here to do two. Because I'm about to do another rod that's exactly the same. Right now. Now just push this little wine check up there. Wipe all this off afterwards so if there's epoxy on it, it's not the end of the world. Alright. Go ahead and put my real seat on there. I'm using the Fuji SK2 real seat with, with this size of blank. So the SK2 real seat, if you're using a real skinny blank, it'll be a big gap in between the front of the real seat and then the blank, so it's not that comfortable. But with this size blank, point blanks have a very... Um, big butt section naturally. So this SK2 feels very very smooth in the transition to this blank from this real seat It's very very smooth it makes this this real seat feels extremely extremely good on this blank in my opinion at least Push this down on there. Now this right here is where I spine the blank when I get this on there I'll just take the blank Load it like this. It has two spines, so I try to find the deepest one. So it definitely feels like this right here is the deepest one. So right there, I'll turn this real seat just straight up in the air, and I'll find the spine. So rods are spiral, so the spine will be different at the tip than it is down here. So I like to find the spine right here where it really, really loads because that's going to give you the most power is being on that dead spine whenever you're really, really loaded on a hard hook set or trying to pull a fish out of some cover or something. It's going to give you the most power if you're on the spine right down here at the meat part of the rod. So about right there is how I want it. Got it dead on. So the next thing that I have to do is measure where I want to put this barrel at because I have a split grip barrel. And like it's got exposed blank in between the barrel and the real seat. So I normally like for the bottom thread to be about an inch, inch and a quarter above this real seat. So I got, I'm going to put a tape arbor. I have an arbor in the top side. I put a tape arbor in the bottom, slide it up over it, and then I measure it, make a mark, put my tape down. So this tape will turn hard as a rock whenever you put epoxy on it and let it harden. That tape no longer feels or acts like tape anymore. So, try to get where it just slides over that tape easily. That's about right right there. I've done a lot of these 7.3s, so I know about how much tape you need. And that's about right. So, next thing we do is lay the epoxy on right there. Same thing, spin it down over the epoxy. It's going to drip back onto the table and onto the magazine cover once again. I cover up that uh, tape. Make sure you get the groove in the back of the barrel right in line with the trigger, which I have right there. So that groove, that's what the bottom of, the, of this nut goes on right here. There's a groove in that nut right there, and that rides down that. So you will need that to be on the very, very bottom if you're going to build your own rods. So the next thing I do is make sure that I got the handle the right length because I do have a tendency to move stuff around whenever I'm epoxying it. So I'm going to make sure I have the right handle length. So I guess you would say this is my control rod. This is the one that I built and I really, really like the handle on it. So I just kind of eyeball it. That is pretty much dead on. So that's what it looks like when it's built. I've built a few of these now. So that's what it looks like built. Very, very simple keeps this rod very very light this rod right here weighs 3.4 ounces your standard seven foot three medium heavy is going to weigh about 4.2 to 4.5 a very very light one is 4 to 4.1 and this one weighs 3.4 ounces so very very light there's one more thing that i do on the top of these winding checks there's always a little bit of space on top of this so i will actually 
Let me get that down. I'll actually make a, a little ring of epoxy right on top of the wine and check. It's right on top. And then this epoxy will actually run down. And you don't worry about it running over it because you can wipe it off. As long as you don't wait longer than about 45 minutes, you can wipe it off very, very easily. So I will put epoxy on top of this wine and check right here on the, on the blank. And I will let it dry standing straight up. And it will actually run down in there and make a seal up in that wine and check. So Hunter won't let me use janky stuff, so this is all going to clean up. All right, so I got... Except your workstation. Yeah, this workstation is janky. The best way i found to do this is to just put this on with masking tape. Go ahead and stick it on there pretty good. Try to get it real flat to the blank, put it in the place you want it. Then when I just start wrapping with thread, whenever I get to the masking tape, I just peel it up. And by the end, the thread will be stuck on there plenty good. That's where I want my hook deeper at. I'm going to wrap this one in purple thread because this is a... No, I'm wrapping this one in silver thread because this is a medium heavy plus rod and I'm putting all those rods, purple guides and then silver hook keeper because it's just a, I got this, these two rod blanks that are just a hair over medium heavy but not quite 7.3 heavies so I'm wrapping them in purple just like my medium heavies and then this right here I'm wrapping in silver so I'm going to grab the silver. So I went and grabbed my silver thread, got it laced up the way I do it, just wrap this around one time, throw it over, lock it in place. Right there, got it locked down now. After it wraps around a few times over the uh, tag end, it really, you know, has enough tension to where it can do itself. And then what, what I'll do is, this looks a little bit slack right now, so I'll pull out two or three rounds of the slack line for two reasons. I want the least amount of thread on there as possible, just because I want the rod to be lighter and need the least amount of epoxy, but I don't want too little to where it's not strong. So I'm going to get it to about right there. Wrap over this tag in a couple times. I'll go ahead and cut it off with my little X-Acto knife. No big deal at all. I did waste a lot of thread, but that's either going to be on the rod or wasted. So I'm on, it's going to be off the spool no matter what because of where I started at on this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this up. Getting it on the foot of some of this stuff is a little bit difficult. Especially this hook keeper right here is a big one. So getting it on the foot of this one is usually a pain. I have filed it down a little. So I just slid this little purple thread under here. What that does is it locks your thread in place whenever you get about to the end of your wrap. Put his little thread back, where there's a little opening in it, cut it off, and then it'll slide down in the opening like that. And then that is it. Everything is on there the way I want it to be. So if I was going to sell these, I'd make it look a little prettier, but this is just for me. So I literally just want practical, hardcore stuff that's going to hold up. So that's how it's going to look. Okay, so I'm trying to build a spinning rod right now, and I don't have as much of a preconceived notion of exactly what I want to have a spin rod because I've never used a whole bunch of different ones but the English resource makes it really easy the English resource website you can come up here I'm using the KR concept guide for my spin rods and they actually have a guide placement calculator type thing it's like a it just tells you where the KR guides should be so you go down here to resources click the gate KR guide placement software scroll down and then you've got these things you got to fill in about your rod so I'm doing a six foot nine drop shot rod so that's a 81 inch rod. I measured this last night. So from the reel seat to the okay from the Mount your reel in the reel seat and the distance from the rod butt to the tip of the spool axle So I'll measure that last night is 12.75 
Let me get that zero out of there. Okay. The real size is going to be a 2500. So I'm going to just go to 2000. Micro conventional, not that big of a deal. I'm going to go ahead and say 20 to 30 pound braid just to make it a little bit easier because I will be throwing uh, tine leader knots and then press calculate. So it tells you the exact guides you need. So I need a 20 high, a 10 high, and then a 5.5 medium or regular. And that's that's how far it sticks up off the blank. So you scroll down here and it shows to, from the spool axle tip, the place that we measured, it's got to be 20 inches to the first guide. Then from that guide to the next one's 8.22. From that guide to the next one, 6.22. Then to the choke guide is 5.82. So, this is a good way to start measure out the right, out the uh, guides, and this is going to give you the most efficient guide placement for casting efficiency. So, what this is going to do is it's going to help that line. It's going to help manage that line to go through the guides and pull it down and make it a nice clean. Because when it comes off spinner rod, it comes off like this, and at that distance is going to make that go through those guides and narrow down and have good efficient cast so this is the best spacing on a six foot nine rod with this size reel for most efficient cast so this is where we're going to start at we're going to static load it and make sure i got everything looking good all right so this over here is my rod dryers got two with rods in them right now the epoxy drying i'm going to kind of show you the difference in see that hook keeper that's the hook keeper that i like for flipping stuff like that this hook keeper right here, I like for like my chatter baits, spinner baits, stuff like that. So still gonna clean these threads up. You can get the edges a little bit better on that and do another cut of epoxy on this purple one. So mixed up my epoxy here. You gotta get real specific with the with the finishing epoxy, not so much with the uh, rod building epoxy or paste, whatever you wanna call it. So I just start doing my first coat now. This is the orange tip that I do on all my rods. I do that orange tip, I think it looks cool. It doesn't really serve any purpose, but it does look cool. And I'll just get a thin coat and then I'll actually kind of glob it on a little then I will come back I will kind of wipe my brush off come back after I've done the entire rod and take all the excess epoxy off to where you can pretty much see the threads all right I'm finished building rods for this time of the year anyways I ended up building about 16 rods to take with me to Florida and the Chickamauga I think I can probably get by with that many and there's two more that I really, really need, but we're going to be okay. We'll make do. Anyways, this is how I built all the rods with that same cork handle, that same reel seat. This is a seven foot six, heavy flipping rod, tons of backbone in this thing, four ounce rod. That's a, this will be a super, super light seven foot three medium heavy for four ounces. And it's a seven, six meat rod. Really, really cool stuff. A cranking rod. Put the silver threads on it, kind of translucent looking. See, one of the things I did, take a rod like a jerkbait rod right here. I went ahead and got a six foot nine blank, made a handle on it, made the handle shorter than average. It's like an eight and three quarter inch handle. And this is gonna be specifically my jerkbait rod. So it's got the perfect action for a jerkbait. Like it loads up pretty well, but it's still pretty fast action, but it's just a little bit lighter to load. And that little, that little short handle is just going to be really easy for me throwing a jerkbait with it. So you can do stuff like that when you're building your own rods. But other than that, I kept most stuff pretty simple. It's pretty simple, pretty typical, except for I like a little bit lighter weight stuff. And that's it. Got them all color coordinated to what kind of power they are, what kind of actions they are. And that's exactly how I wanted everything to be. It's time to string these suckers up with some K9 fishing line. That reminds me, if you want to order K9, there's a discount code KW, get you 10% off on K9 Fishing Line. About to put it on all these reels. Get ready to go fishing tomorrow and break these suckers in. Hold on. Got to show you one, one thing. Sneak peek. Sneak peek. All right. That's all you get to see. I will do a full walkthrough on the boat wrap and everything. Uh, probably Monday. There you go. See y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, hit that subscribe button. It's going to be a fun year. Subscribe. Turn the alerts on.